Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today. Elko, how are you? The agreed to talk to TT. <laughs> Same to you. Uh, in this I'll episode, again. I'll again. <laughs> in this episode, we're going to be looking at Ireland, and with Andy Farrell being named Lions coach this week, how do you see them shaping up following? In results-wise, certainly it ended up being a disappointing World Cup. It did, yes. Um, I, it's it's interesting. He's he stuck to his guns, hasn't he? And and he's uh, intimated in the press in Ireland that he doesn't give a crap about World Cup cycles, and he's cracking on. Um, and fair play. Uh, I think if Ireland had have had have gone on and done what we thought was possible and won the thing. You know, he wasn't going to drop anyone. He would have picked picked the same players and gone through. You know, pick on form and, and everything else. So, um, I think he's right to do so. There's a few injury issues, um, but the spine of the team is is pretty much bang on. Um, you know, from from what we from what we know, uh, and he's he's blooded is going to blood hopefully a few a few players or at least uh, has invited a few youngsters into the the training squad. But um, yeah, he he's a a tough northern man who 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 knows what he wants to do. Yeah, I mean, similar to France, who we spoke about in the previous episode, if Ireland had gone on to win the World Cup, I don't think anybody would have had any complaints whatsoever. They've played some incredible rugby over the previous two years and only one team can win it. So that's just the way it is. Right, let's dig into this squad, a 34-man squad. And I would say the most interesting thing overall is that there are zero uncapped players in this squad. So, um, yeah, essentially not blooding anybody in, in the full squad. How do you, How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think he's hasn't he picked three. What have they called us? Like panelists, yeah, yeah, something some, like some that. Some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, and then and three. You know, well, certainly Sam Prendergast, who's the uh, who will play for Ireland at ten. Who's who is? Uh, we spoke to about him offline a while back, TT. But he was playing uh, in the World Cup in the under twenties, and he's a he's he is he's a player. He's very tall. Needs to bulk up a little bit, um, but he's he's brought back the spiral. He's 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 a class player, but yeah, I mean, look, um, loads of experience. Um, as I said, he doesn't care about uh, sort of what thinking ahead four years. I think he wants to 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 crack on. Um, you know, if it ain't broken, all, all that kind of good stuff. There's a few players that missed out, but that's that's just the way it is. Um, and again, you know, to continue continue this the theme that we've been talking about in terms of of club form. And um, we've got, I think, nineteen Leinster players, if I'm not mistaken, which is a big old, a big old lump uh, of, of players. Bearing in mind that that Munster are going through one of the worst injury crises any any club has probably gone through in a very long time. They've got so many people injured, but um, yes, the the the, the Leinster uh, the Leinster players were there. Let's, let's hope that they um, can get through some tough uh, games and not choke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Prendergast, who you mentioned there, is a training addition. He's only 20 years old, so still still very much a youngster. But yes, has been talked up. I've heard him, his name many, many times from many people who, who know their stuff. So, you know, maybe an injury or two. He might end up in the squad and, you know, make a debut. But we'll see about that. In the forwards here, I mean, a word for Peter Omani. Uh, yeah. Made captain. And I don't know. I feel like he's been around for absolutely ever. Uh, but I checked, he and he's, he's 32 years old. Yeah, but I, I I don't know. I felt like he was older somehow. I think he's just always looked old. Like he's got one of those faces, hasn't he, that, that's never yeah. really been youthful. Um, yeah. But that's a I, huge, I huge he's, honor. He's, yeah, he's never been ID'd, apparently, at like, nightclubs um, ever. Uh, yeah, and an interesting subplot that, you know, he stood down as, you know, from captaincy of Munster. And there's a lot of uh, unrest in terms of his contract negotiations going forward. I think it's up this year. So, for again, Farrell doesn't care. But he's just like I'm doing what I want to do, um, and picking him is really interesting. I, I think it's a good selection any, anyway. I think he's 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 playing really well, and he's I think he's a brilliant captain. Uh, uh, players will follow him. Uh, he's got a good injury profile. Should be good. Uh, the the way the back row is made up, they can flip and change different players and, and either move into six or or, or into the second row, or whatever. Uh, so, but it's it. I just think it's a it's a bit of a 
don't know if it's a power play from Farrell, but it's it's an interesting one that if you know how how can how can the RFU let him go to France? He's he'll be the he's the captain, you know. So it's 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 an interesting one. But I'm I'm delighted for him and and, and well deserved. Um, he's he's probably been leading that pack and and was part of the leadership team while Sexton's been there anyway. But uh, fair play to him. With the number of Leinster players, as you mentioned before, do you think it's important to have the captain as uh, from one of the other provinces? It's really interesting, isn't it? Because I, I, <laughs> well, I, and there's a gap. I think because th- th- there's clearly a vacuum when uh, with Sexton going, not only in positionally but in terms of leadership, and especially at Leinster, and they've struggled to find a captain at Leinster. I feel um, obviously they 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 chose Ryan. Um, and then Ryan, <laughs> Ryan got uh, sort of uh, side checked by I think Matt Carley was it, um, uh, who wouldn't speak to him because because weirdly they they'd also chosen a vice captain, which I thought was or a co captain, which is odd, yeah. yeah, which was uh, Ringrose, which kind of then gives a cap uh, a referee a, a way out. And I don't I don't agree with what Carly did. I think you, you've got to you can't just say I'm not speaking to him, particularly so early on. Um, but yeah, so there's vacuum. It is. I don't know whether it's important for the captain to come from another province, but it's certainly an interesting dynamic. Um, and I don't think there are many monster players that could pull it off. But he is. That shows you how, what kind of man he is, um, and what kind of leader he is. Yeah, I mean, overall, I look at this forward selection, this squad selection, and I just see strength in depth, absolutely everywhere. This Ireland team can wear a lot of injuries, I think, in the forward pack and still be incredibly effective. Uh, is there? A, do you see any, like any weaknesses at all? Are there any areas where you think they're maybe a little bit thin? You asked me this before the World Cup, and I, <laughs> I'm having nightmares. Uh, no, I mean front row a little bit. Tie head, I think. You know, Furlong, Furlong's not not really ticking where. He has been, but I, I think people judge him through a weird lens. Um, my 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 rugby wife in Dublin has always gone on about Furlong's. You know, he's he's his form's gone. He's not as good. But I think because we measure him at such a high level of some of the runs he used to do, you know, I don't think it's fair. I think I, I still think he's awesome. Um, a great player and, and he's there to sh- you know really he's there to show up the scrum and yes if we can get him to to do some um some running as well that'd be great i think behind him i'm not i'm not 100 convinced of what's there um keen healy is in as well my god 125 caps <laughs> he is he is unreal unbelievable um how he looks after his his body but um yeah i, I don't know i mean hooker Two of the best in the world, certainly one of. Um, uh, yeah, um, and yeah, it's. I, I I think we've got nice balance in the back row as well. Um, I mean, okay, okay, to talk, maybe a weakness might be. Let's take your point about, which is really interesting and it's making my brain really tick about a monster uh, guy leading the team in a very competitive back row. Will that will that create a little bit of, you know, <laughs> rot in you know, a few boys talking and in the Leinster sort of guys? I don't, maybe I don't know. There might be some uh, guys that feel that they've been, you know, Ryan might think he should have got the the captaincy. Who knows? Um, so it'd be be interesting, and they can't drop him, right? So that means um, someone's going to lose out in that in that back row. Um, but let's let's see. I, I think they look good. Le- Leinster have been looking pretty good. To be fair, I've watched quite a bit of them in the URC and Champions. That they, they, they've been looking pretty good, um, and they'll be very well rested, as we know, with the the system that they have. And um, this team will come in peaking um, and and looking good. Absolutely. Let's move on to the backs. And obviously, we mentioned Sexton uh, retiring, so he's no longer involved. Is is the big one, but another big loss, uh, particularly for me personally, because I love this player. Is uh, is Matt Hansen, who's out injured? I think it's some kind of shoulder dislocated. Yeah, he's shoulder, had a reconstruction. Yeah. yeah. Oh, has he? Okay. So um, yeah. he's he's a big loss as well. But Ireland are not really short of of good wingers. So um, what, what are you seeing in the back division here? 
Yeah, I mean, there was the, the the chat over the last week or two. It has been, you know, since Matt got injured, what what are they going to do? Um, and and there was a bit of pressure on some of the players uh, in the last round of the Champions Cup to see who stood up. And uh, one of the names that they were talking about was was be, sorry, just to go back because he's out. Um, we do not have a pure fifteen to cover Keenan, and that that's been an issue before. Um, Jimmy O'Brien is injured as well, so that, that's that's not good. So the, there was a lot of chat about Zebo, um, who's been who's been playing exceptionally way, well for months now. I'm I'm not a particular fan of his, um, uh, not not my type of chap, but but he he doesn't you, know, you can't deny he's he's he is he's 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 quality and he's really stood up. Um, and you know there's a few selections in other squads that we we've spoken about in in, in other. Um, podcast this week but you know this age thing seems to be going out the window um and rightfully so i think players can play right into their late 30s um as was shown by south africa uh in the world cup um so um yeah so so in, in terms of 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 sort of where there might be a bit of an issue here is 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 covering full back and what we do with that and stockdale's come in which is is brave um, from from Farrell, I think. Um, let's see if he goes all the way through and makes the the final game squads. Um, he's been okay for Ulster, but he hasn't got back to how good we know he can be. Um, and a, a, another bit of a surprise for me was Connor Murray staying in there. Um, I just not not nothing to do with his age or anything. I just don't think he's been playing particularly well. He's come on and made a lot of mistakes in the last couple of games. Um, but uh, Casey's been playing well. But yeah, it's an interesting, an interesting backline there. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see Stockdale get back to the form that he was in. God, it was quite a while ago now, wasn't it? Maybe four, it four five years ago. It'd be, because yeah. he was, he was, he was coming strong, and he looked like he might have become one of the best wingers in the world. And now, for whatever reason, he he hasn't been. So it's good to see him back in an Ireland squad, and I hope he takes his chance if he can get it. Um, Overall, I mean, I think I think the real story of this Ireland squad is, is can they move on without Johnny Sexton, without his leadership and the way, in particular, just the way he moves them around the pitch. That's the biggest call for me. Aside from that, they look incredibly strong, I think, and will be challenging at the top of the Six Nations this year. What's your sort of overall thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think that is is the what, who do they pick at ten? I, I think it's going to be Crowley. I think he's he's another monster boy who's who's playing exceptionally well behind a uh, behind a pack that's been decimated by injuries. Uh, although they've been do, doing well, he's he for me he is he is the guy that they need to to build a team around uh, and push on. I'm not convinced by either of the per, uh, Burn brothers um, that they. Again, it's tough having been behind Sexton for so many years, but it, that vacuum, I think it's going to take a couple of years for them to to really get the confidence of uh, and not be, you know, looking over their shoulder. So I think you build a team around around um, um, around Jack Crowley and 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 go from there. And, and then our centre combinations are are class um, and and sort of got some some uh, interesting uh, firepower. The other the other kid that he's come through and he's got a couple of caps. I think um, he got one cap. I see is Calvin Nash um, and I, I've liked him for Munster. He's he's been looking good, strong, strong, abrasive um, player and, and can finish as well. So um, yeah, I, I think I think carrying on from the World Cup and their form and you know, Farrell giving them all a kind of vote of confidence and we're cracking on as we were, guys. I think they'll be thereabouts with a with a, a similar um, French uh, outfit as well. Yeah. Now, tactically, what do you think? Do you think they're going to try and change their game plan at all? Because we've been used to Ireland playing like a huge possession game, attacking the line really flat with tons of options all over the place. Do you think they're going to try and continue that or maybe go back to a previous version where they were more territorial? Based, how how do you see them progressing? I think they'll I think they'll continue. I think I think they'll they'll crack on. I don't think there's enough time um, to 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 change it dramatically. And why would you when you've got combinations and players that know each other so well? Um, you know, in 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 terms of how they play on the, lo- on the loose, I guess. Th- Having a different ten will make a difference, um, and and how he runs the game and decides to run the game, of course, um, and what strike moves they play in different areas. But presumably they'll they'll 
there'll probably be a few little add-ons. I'm sure there will be some stuff that they've maybe seen uh, strike moves that clubs have been doing um, uh, in the dom- in the domestic leagues. But I think we'll see a a, a fairly um, a, fair, a fairly familiar uh, way of playing, and, and it will be a Leinster way. And once they get into the twenty-two, can they score? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think they're going to be very much at the top of the table, challenging for that uh, that title. And you know, the first game may be the decider, which is in Paris uh, in a couple of weeks' time on a Friday night. Sorry, not in Paris, in France. Um, but what do you think at home? Is there anything in this Irish squad that we've missed that you think might be quite important? Any players that you think are going to have standout championships maybe coming into the side when they haven't been before? And anybody that might get dropped or just dropped by the wayside, let us know in the comments below and we'll join you there for a conversation. While you're down there, give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Elko, thank you very much once again. Long TT. Take care. For those at home, get out and play.